Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller, the podcast. I'm joined by Seth. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for finding us on, uh, on, the, on the internet. Now, these shows originally aired on Brookings Radio, but now they're all here for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. There you go. Sit back, enjoy the show, relax. Uh, let us know if you want to see anything on future shows. As we said, the, this comes out live in the Brookings area, but enjoy this archive episode. Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Craft beer in America is still dominated by ales, but craft lagers are making inroads, especially this time of year as Oktoberfest beers begin to appear on shelves. Every once in a while, we need to give some love to lagers. And not coincidentally, Wooden Legs has recently brewed a few lagers. During the summer, we at the brewing company have a little bit of discretionary space to brew lagers. During the fall year, of course, we our big busy weeks are of the fall. We probably that's probably no secret to anybody that um, <laughs> drives around Brookings. But during the summer, we we have a little bit of time to put some of our loggers on. That's Seth Cook at Wooden Legs Brewing at Brookings. Speaking broadly here, the prime differences between loggers and ales are the yeast used to ferment them and the amount of time they take to finish. Loggers just take longer. Loggers as opposed to ales, and of course we're just talking about beer here, but these are the two these are the two houses of beer. Yep. These are the two big tree tree branches. Loggers are bottom fermenting is is what they're usually called and they're usually cool fermenting so you'll see the tanks in the pub here and you'll notice that a lot of our tanks right now are sweating like a like a glass would in a humid day and it is humid as well but those tanks are kept at a lower temperature during the lagering phase and that helps clean and finish the beer and using some really broad brush strokes here ales originate from from the uk and and kind of the british isles and lagers are more continental europe specifically germany prior to the appearance of lagers all beers were ales Top fermenting beers that can be made relatively quickly. Lagers first began appearing in the 1400s and probably originated in what is now part of the Czech Republic. There wasn't much understood about the differences in the yeast. The, the, the process was different. You know, the lager beers of Germany were lager to means to store. Uh, they were cellared. They were stored in cool caves for longer periods. And that just had some selective... Selective breeding, I really. Mean, selective breeding, I guess that's the best way to say it. The, the yeast that produced well at those temperatures got used again. Lagers didn't really catch on until the rise of refrigeration, which meant you could then brew them year-round. They're now the dominant beer style in the world. All of the world's biggest selling beers are a type of pale lager. Craft brewers seldom brewed lagers until fairly recently, and now they seem to be gaining traction. Here at the brewing company, we like lagers. I mean, I, there's I, I, many brewers that I know um, enjoy lagers just as well as their ales. There is a there is a, a bit of peculiarness in, in doing them because they take in sometimes twice as much tank time. And when you you need to get a beer turned around quick, you you know sometimes that lager sits in the way. Um, I don't know if I should say it's harder, but it maybe takes more precision. Right, it, it, you have to be a little bit more deliberate about some of the things, and and not not to say you would ever be reckless with an no, ale. No, not but, at all. But a lager yeast and, and a lager strain, um, you have to make sure your your your, your wort, I mean your unfermented beer, is handled very correctly. More on lagers when beer untapped continues in a moment. Another lager tonight. Welcome back to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller as we give some love to lagers. As we mentioned, the major difference between lagers and ales is the yeast. The lager yeast strain is going to have much more clarity in the taste. There's not as much residual yeast flavors. And some of those flavors, not all the time, but ale yeast, um, some there's some alcohol, there's some sharpness to them. Sometimes there's some green apple. Sometimes there's, and there's a whole often series. Very fruity often fruity ale yeast. Yeah. A very, there's a series of, of, of flavors. And, and, and often, if you do it correctly, those ale yeast, those, those flavors are muted. But in lager yeast, they're especially absent. So you could, you could have a very distinct different experience. Lagers often described as clean and crisp and frequently are crystal clear, though not always. That's all thanks to the yeast. 
We're talking lagers with Seth Cook at Wooden Legs Brewing Company of Brookings, where they have a lager now being served. This is our IPO. It's called Uncommon. We just like the name because yeah. you don't usually find, and you're finding it more and more, but an IPA is kind of the category champion that everybody always hears of is the India Pale Ale. And this beer is a India Pale Lager, which really is it dramatically, historically, grossly historically inaccurate. Um, but that doesn't stop any brewers from making it. So but it kind of says what it is, though. Right, right. It's, a, it, it's it, a hoppy lager. Grossly historically inaccurate, but incredibly descriptive yeah. of what it is. It has the hop forward attributes of an IPA. It has a lot of the base malts of an IPA. So there's a touch of caramel, but a lot of the sweetness of the malts. Not a not nearly as transparent as some pilsners. This one is finished with a with a lager yeast. Um, actually, it's a new lager yeast that we're trying this year, and that's kind of why we went through a lager cycle. Is that we had a had a couple different options for lager yeast come up to us this summer. We said, let's you know, let's try some of these. And they have a couple more lagers in the works. We have also made an October Fest beer that we just call Fest. That one will come out in September. For those trivia geeks out there, that October Fest do happen in September. Yes, they do. Um, we also made what was a really big favorite last year. It was a continental European dark lager, um, and it's, it was the one that was commissioned last year for when USD came to play SDSU, and it was quite popular that we brought it back. Uh, for those of you wanting to know the name, it is just the better than you lager. It should also be pointed out, lagers don't have to be pale yellow. They can be about any color from gold to amber to a rich brown to virtually black. So try a lager. That's not one of those mass-produced fizzy yellow beers. Very good ones available locally include Sam Adams Boston Lager, Shell's Pills, Celebrator Doppelbach, and just about any of the German or Kraft Oktoberfest beers already on the shelves. Sierra Nevada's is especially good this year. Now, to wrap this thing up, Seth reminds us of some fun events coming up at Wooden Legs, including... 90s night this Saturday night. It's going to be awesome. Have some special brews out. Um, have some retro beers. Uh, Derek's been planning all kinds of events. We have got costume contests. We're going to have a 90s high school picture photo booth or school picture photo booth that you can come uh, get your garb on. And, of course, we'll have music. We'll play everything from Nirvana to No Doubt. It's just a fun time. So it's it, it, it follow us on Facebook for all of the details. And then don't forget, I know the football, it's kind of weird. The football game's on Thursday. We're still serving fan cakes. So in the morning. Oh, cool. So uh, it may not have be as big as it always is, but if we've been open for four years and we have yet to miss a home football game with pancakes, it's going to be a Thursday, the 31st, 31st. August 31st. It is a Thursday. Skip work, come down, drink beer, and eat pancakes. And the proceeds go to a local charity. That's it for this week's show. Until next time, drink local and drink responsibly. Thank you for listening to this archived edition of Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Feel free to listen to other episodes. And if there's anything you'd like us to talk about on a future show, please let us know. Thanks again.